Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. Today I am super happy to introduce the Salt Water Shoulder Bag by Needle and Anchor Supply Company. This pattern is just amazing. I learned many new things with this bag. We use facings with this bag. Um, uh, yeah, it's just amazing. Let me show you some of the features of this bag. So it features this kangaroo style pocket on both sides. It's a fairly large one. As you can see, I can fit my whole hand in there. Um, you can make it just with the one side. You could actually even open on the other side so it can go all the way through if you wanted to. Same with on the back. Um, you can make it with a crossbody strap. You can make it with grommets here if you wanted to. Um, I chose to do it with shoulder straps. It is a double-sided strap. Um, I did it as a magnetic closure. There are also instructions on how to do it with a recessed zipper closure. I think I would try that with my next one as well. My favorite thing about this bag is the center zipper divider pocket, and it is huge. Like this bag is a really roomy, awesome bag. And of course it has a zipper pocket on one side. It'd be so easy to add a slip pocket or another zipper pocket on this other side if you wanted to. That's one thing I love about Chris's bags is they are so customizable to whatever your needs are. Um, so I made this one in more of a leather Rex Vinyls from Emmeline bag, bags, uh, interfacing in this bag. I use EB Fuse Light, which I got at Emmeline Bags on all of my woven pieces. Uh, there's Deck of a Light in parts of this bag. Um, all my hardware is from Emmeline Bags. What else? What else? What else? Uh, I think that's really it. Uh, the biggest and most expensive part of the interfacing was actually the woven because there are so many woven pieces with that divider pocket in there. Um... But yeah, it's, it's, I don't know, Krista, you have outdone yourself again. Um, Stephanie is also going to be doing a tutorial on this bag. I'm going to put her channel down in the description below. When hers gets up, if you go and like and subscribe her channel, then you'll be able to see her tutorial on this bag when she gets it done. Uh, what else? I don't know. I just love this bag. I have also put a link down below uh, where you can go and buy this bag. It also comes with a free pouch pattern, a supplementary pouch pattern. I have not done that tutorial yet. It will be up soon. Depending when you're watching this, it may already be up. Yeah, I'm just, just love it. Love it, love it, love it. Anyways, if you like this video and you would like to support my channel, you can always go down below in the description and buy me a coffee. That's completely optional. Um, that many goes towards buying better equipment to better my tutorials. Um, yeah, so without further ado, let's get to making this bag. All right, so you are going to need number five zipper and to number five pulls. I'm using number three because I do not have any more number five zipper pull. You're going to need two magnetic snaps, your nameplate, four rectangular rings, rivets, and that's it. It's very hardware light. For pieces, you are going to need to cut six of these kangaroo pocket ones, two exteriors backed with deck of a light, and four in lining fabric backed with your woven interfacing. All right, so I only show one lining gusset piece. You do need two of those there, and then your external gusset piece backed with your deck of a light piece. You're going to need two lining tops, also backed with your deck of a light. You're going to need four strap connector pieces with a little bit of deck of a light running down the center. Two zipper tabs. You're going to need your zipper pocket lining. Your double sided strap pieces. So four of them because I'm doing two straps. All right, and this is your exterior main panel and your two facing pieces. These are crazy pieces. They will make so much sense once we get into the tutorial. Your divider pocket linings. Your 
your lining bottom pieces, your divider pocket outer pieces. Again, all of these are backed with EB Fuse Light. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my dual straps. I do have a class for that down in the description below. All right, so I went ahead to practice doing this first panel because this is my first time making this bag. So as you can see, I've done one side. I decided to leave the other side closed off, but you can definitely go ahead and make this two-sided if you wanted to. So let me show you how I made this panel. You are gonna take your exterior main piece and your facing piece, and you are gonna put them right sides together and you are gonna line up that opening in the middle and clip them along the raw edges along that center cutout area. How I did this is I like to match the top corners first, just so I know I'm gonna be catching everything when I go and stitch this together. And do this all the way around. So we have it clipped all the way around and we are going to sew around that with a 1 8th of an inch seam allowance. Now put that piece aside and then bring out your kangaroo pocket exterior and lining piece and go ahead and clip that all the way around. I'm trying to show a little more how I do my actual sewing day by day. So then go ahead and we're going to go ahead and sew all the way around the sides but not the top. So I'm going to take my two pieces that I just clipped and take them to the machine and sew them at the same time. Okay, so for our exterior piece we're going to go around with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Just on that inner cutout part. So when I do sewing, a lot of the time what I like to do is prepare a bunch of pieces at my cutting table and then I will put them in a bin and then I will take them all over to my sewing machine and then do a mass sew and then rinse and repeat with all the other pieces. So I'm showing that a little bit in this video. These two pieces are going to be working together to be our main panel. So I figured this would just help speed up things a little bit by clipping them and then going and having them both at the sewing table at the same time. As you can see, I am still on my cylinder arm. I am still waiting for the repair on my flatbed machine. Uh, my tutorials will normally be part on my flatbed and then finished on the cylinder arm, but uh, these tutorials are helping me get to know my new machine very well. Thank goodness for the flatbed table attachment. All right, so that finishes up the first main piece. Then we're gonna work on the kangaroo pocket. Now we are going around this one with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I believe. Double check your pattern to make sure that is correct. And we are not going to sew along the top part because that is where we're gonna turn this through. I'm getting used to using my laser as my seam guide on my cylinder arm. If you have any questions about that, make sure you shoot me an email and ask. Okay, so just kind of pull the seam apart just to make sure everything was caught. And this is a little bit awkward at first, just because I'm using a very soft vinyl. Um, you want to turn them wrong sides together and give that seam a really nice press if you can. I'm actually gonna go ahead and use some double-sided tape outside of the seam allowances just to kind of hold them in place. If you're using all cotton, definitely take it to the iron. It'll make it a lot easier. Okay, so I have that all done. Again, I have secured mine with double-sided tape outside of the seam allowances, and I'm just going to end up basting right along this top part here, not worrying about the rest of it just yet. Okay, so I have basted along that top bridge, and that is just to hold everything in place for now, I want to find my top centers and my bottom centers of this piece. So I'm doing my typical small little clips. You can definitely use your marking pen if you wanted to. So I'm taking my, my back underlay piece 
Again, finding the center on that one as well. And what we're going to do is we are going to have them both right side up, put the under, um, underlay piece underneath the main panel, match up that top center. And I'm just going to clip along this top edge to hold it in place. And because I am using vinyl, I can't pin the rest of it to this. So I'm going to show you a little trick that I do that doesn't uh, make too much of a sticky mess. So I want to be able to push this down. I'm just going to kind of baste it down with some masking tape that I will take off later. And it's just to hold it in place at the machine so it doesn't slide or what have you while I am stitching this in place. Painter's tape would work too. Okay, and now we're going to go around here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So you can see I started at the top and went all the way around. Now I'm going to just kind of draw a line where you can kind of see here where uh, that quarter inch seam would have been because that top bridge part we are going to cut away. You kind of want to lift it away from the underlay, underlay piece and cut along that line following the line of that center cut out. And that is gonna give us the backing to our kangaroo pocket. Okay, so now let's pull out that kangaroo pocket we had already sewn. We're gonna turn it right side out. And you're gonna press out all of those seams nice and round. I'm gonna actually take this to the iron and just press on the cotton side just to make sure it's nice and crisp. Being careful not to touch my vinyl, of course. Okay, so now we are gonna go ahead and we are going to top stitch around this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, just like so. Not the top part, just the rest. Now we want to make the spaces where we're gonna have our kangaroo pocket. Again, you can do this on both sides. I'm just gonna do it on the one side. So I'm going to take my marking pen and measure down one and a half inches from the left hand side. If you're doing this on both sides, you would do it on the left and the right hand side. And then from that line, we're going to measure down five and a half inches and make another mark. And what we're doing here is we're just going to go ahead and top stitch at an eighth of an inch in between those lines. And that's just going to give us a finished top stitch. And when we attach this to the exterior of the bag, we are going to finish off those lines around the rest. So here you go. And the reason we want to do that is because that part of the bag is not going to be sewn down to the exterior. Okay, so let's take our kangaroo pocket. We are going to find the center top there. Folding in half and doing a small snip right in the center. And we are going to match that snip up with the snip on the underlay we did. And we are going to clip it all along that top. And then what we're going to do is take this to the machine and we are going to top stitch this down in place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to take my Chaco just to show where I had already sewn where our pocket is. So we are going to go with an eighth of an inch all the way around. We're going to go down here and back stitch, kind of meeting up with that eighth of an inch uh, top stitch we had done at the opening there. Cut our thread and go down to the other ending of where that top stitch was and all the way around. Now you don't want to sew down in between the two markings just because then you would be closing up your pocket. I decided I was also going to go ahead and baste the top of this in place. Just so I know all of my layers are staying where they need to be. Okay, so I'm going down the side that I don't have the pocket on. If you had a pocket, make sure that you're starting and stopping at your marks and making sure your 1 8th of an inch top stitch is matching up with the 1 8th of the top stitch that we did in the pocket openings. Take the curves nice and slow. This is functional and decorative, so you want it to look good. I'm approaching my bottom line there, so I am going to watch and make sure I needle down into 
the last stitch of that opening top stitch and just do a little bit of a back stitch to secure that. Cut my thread and then jump over that opening, pinning my needle down in the 1 8 of an inch uh, opening top stitching and continuing on to the end. And then finishing my baste at the top. Okay, so now I just want to secure this opening with a few rivets just in case uh, it gets used so much and we don't want those uh, uh, stitches to pop at all. You can also remove your masking tape at this time and cut away the excess facing as you don't need it. And I use double-sided tape to hold this in place, so that's what you see me pulling away. Okay, so for my rivet placement, I'm just going to take my Tandy leather pen here and I'm going to mark right where the opening begins, like this, and that's where I'm going to put my two rivets. Just like this one here. And I also back them with little scrap pieces of Decoville Heavy just to make give them a little bit extra uh, security. Okay, so now you're going to take your top lining pieces and we are going to uh, use the pattern piece to mark where we are going to be placing our magnetic snaps. So on one of these, you're going to place the two female snaps and on the other one, you are going to place the two male snaps. I'm also going to take... Uh, this opportunity, well, you can see here, I, I put little holes in my thing so I could just draw through it. But we have these little side lines here. Um, I'm just going to mark them on the back. They will be on the front, but uh, this way these ones won't disappear and I can actually put my pattern piece away. So I'm just going to mark them on my back piece for now. And I'm going to do the same on the other one. Again, installing the two female on one side and the two male on the other side. Okay, so here's my two female, here's my two male, and I have secured them with a little piece of Decoville Heavy behind the washer, and then just put a piece of duct tape behind that just to um, protect the lining fabric from the prawns, etc. So I made sure they matched up and we are good. Okay, so let's prepare our connector pieces for our straps. So I drew a line in the middle, and what you wanna do is bring the long edges into that center line. So I am using just some double-sided tape to help me with this. You can definitely go ahead and use clips if you prefer. Now I cut my Decoville heavy pieces or Decoville light pieces a little bit too big here, but I'm not worrying about it because I do have an industrial. Okay, so we have our four one inch connectors. Now what we want to do is we want to measure two inches on the wrong side and mark that with a pen. I'm just using my Soline Air Erase pen here. And then you want to me uh, measure half an inch from the bottom on all of the pieces. Okay, so we have our lines here. This is kind of going to be a guide. I'm just going to kind of transfer the mark to the front side with my chalk pen. And this is kind of going to be a guide where we will be placing our rectangle rings on the strap. So you want to measure in three quarters of an inch from the side. And we're going to use that as our placement for this. So the half inch on the bottom that we just marked is going to overhang this band. And you can see how that half inch line almost exactly matches up where that line is on the top lining band. We're close enough. So you can make sure that's nice and straight. I'm using my ruler as my guide and then I'm going to take a couple clips and clip that in place. And then I'm going to go ahead and do that with the other three connectors on the other three sides of these lining bands. And then we're just gonna base them along the bottom here. 
Okay, so we have them basted. So I went ahead and did this already. I went and installed rivets backed with some Decaval Heavy just below that uh, two inch line that we drew on the back to secure the um, connectors in place. I'm gonna put a little bit of Decaval, or not Decaval, uh, double sided tape, too many D words today, along the bottom here. You can also do this with clips if you like. This is not gonna be in your seam allowances at all. I'm gonna take my rectangular ring and bring it down along where that rivet is and secure the bottom with that double-sided tape to hold it in place. And you can go ahead and use a clip there if you prefer to hold it in place. And you're gonna do the exact same thing with the other three. And then we're going to go ahead and base that along the bottom there. Okay, so we have that all done. Okay, so now I'm going to take my lining panel. I already went ahead and put my zipper pocket on. It's the exact same way I do it in my class, which I've put down below. We're going to take our lining band and our bottom main lining piece, put them right sides together and clip them along the top. Now we're gonna go ahead and sew this with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do the same with the other side, take them both to your machine, we'll do them at the same time. Again, if you're on an industrial, make sure you're holding your threads back. I'm pretty sure that is how I uh, broke my machine. Um, if you don't hold those threads back, sometimes they can get uh, caught in the bobbin, bobbin mechanism and yeah, it's just not good. So always make sure you're holding your threads back if you're on your industrial machine. Okay, so now we want to place that seam pointing down towards the bottom and we're gonna to top stitch along this lining side. So on my industrial machine, I'm doing my sewing with the number four stitch length and I'm doing my top stitching with a number six. Then you go ahead and do this exact same thing with the other lining panel. Okay, so that is both done. We'll set those aside for now. And now we are going to prepare our divider pocket. So if you're using zipper by the yard, you wanna make sure that this measures 13 inches. I'm about a quarter of an inch shy. It's not gonna make a huge difference. So I'm just gonna go with it. This is the only length of number five tape I had left in my stash. So it has to do. Okay, so I'm using vinyl zipper ends, so they will be done a little bit different than in the pattern, which is cotton. I will show you how to do both. So you're gonna take your zipper end, put it right sides together with your zipper tape. We're gonna take this to the machine and stitch across here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, that's done. Then you're gonna fold it back on that seam. Now, if you're using cotton, you would fold the raw end into the middle like that and then over. I'm just going to fold it like this and then I'm going to cut the excess off later. Then I don't have to worry about catching both sides of that folded edge. And because I'm using vinyl, the opposite side isn't fraying, so it works good in this case. And then we're going to take this to the machine and top stitch these little areas with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. So that's done. As you can see, I am going to trim off my excess vinyl. If you did the folded under part, you wouldn't have a raw edge. You wouldn't have to worry about that. You just have to make sure you caught both sides with your stitching. And then trim that zipper end up to match the width of the zipper tape. Okay, so now we're gonna take our zipper lining. We're gonna find that center. and the center of our lining piece as well.
Okay, now I am on a domestic, so I am using my double-sided tape. If you are not on my desk, on my industrial, if you're on a domestic and it can't handle the double-sided tape, please, please, please use the clips. This leather tape definitely will gum up a domestic machine's needle. So please know the limitations of your machine. So now you want to center this zipper panel onto our lining piece as centered as you can. I'm a little bit off here, so I'm just going to kind of readjust and eyeball it. And you want it to be in from the ends because we are not going to catch those zipper tabs in our uh, stitching. Okay, you could go ahead and base that if you wanted to. I'm going to keep going with my tape. You can do this exact same thing with clips if you want to skip the basting step. So I'm going to put it on my lining exterior piece and then put this right sides together with that lining piece and the zipper. Now notice the lining and the zipper are both right sides up. That's what we want. And now we are going to sandwich that zipper in between the two panels. And if you were using clips, you would just go ahead and clip all along there like so. Okay, so go ahead and stitch that with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then we are gonna place those two panels wrong sides together and top stitch across here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Go ahead and do the exact same thing with the other side of the zipper and the other two panels. Okay, so that's done. You'll notice the lining pieces are shorter. That is what we want. So go ahead and match up the sides. Make sure those seams match up. And you want to kind of be aware of the shorter lining pieces in between here. I'm going to use my hair gaiter clips because I think it'll just hold everything in place better because we are kind of matching up two different layers, if that makes sense. So you're matching up that center of the lining, the shorter pieces together, and then the exterior, which are longer together. So these gaiter clips just help keep everything in place. They're just on Amazon. They're just a hair clip. Okay, so we're going to go and we're going to go three quarters of an inch seam allowance to catch that center one. So that's kind of like a top stitch. And then we're going to go along the outside and baste it with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so for those of you that have been curious about the laser, um, this is how I adjust my seam allowance. I kind of put where I want my needle to be in the center and then measure out with my ruler. We're doing three quarters of an inch. I still am using my magnetic guide because I'm still getting used to using this laser guide. Okay, so this three quarter of an inch top stitch we're doing is going to catch that lining piece, which is shorter than the exterior piece, making sure we're catching it and closing it up. So before we continue, we're just going to open that up and double check that we did indeed catch all of those lining and there's no holes and we are good. And then you can go ahead and baste the exterior panels with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. And that's our zipper pocket, our divider pocket done. Okay, so now we are going to take our two, two lining gusset pieces and find our centers. So you're going to go ahead and snip on both sides the centers of your gusset pieces. Okay, and on each of the short ends, we're going to take our ruler and our marking pen on the wrong side. We are going to measure in 5 eighths of an inch and make a mark. I apologize for my light shining down on this. I didn't realize it was reflecting so badly on that ruler. After that 5 eighths, you're going to measure down one inch and make a mark. You're going to do that on all four short ends, 5 eighths and one inch.
Okay, now we're going to take the lining panel that has our zipper pocket and we are going to take those chalk lines that we had drawn on. We're going to use that as a guide and place this gusset piece right up against that line. Now this is a really cool technique that I'm going to show you here. I have never done a gusset this way and it is just, it is just awesome. I love it. So go ahead, match the center at the bottom as well, and then evenly distribute that fabric all the way around the curve. If you need to, you can make small clips into the curve uh, to help bring that gusset piece around that corner nicely if you need to distribute the fabric a little bit more. Okay, now we're going to start at that 5 eighths of an inch line and go up to the other 5 eighths of an inch line. We're not going all the way atop, to the top with the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance like we have done here. Then you're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the other panel, but you are going to leave an opening in the bottom for turning later. So again, you don't go to the, all the way to the top, just to that 5 eighths line. Okay, so now take your divider pocket and find your bottom center. And then make sure you orientate your zipper pull going the same way as the pocket piece there. So they're both closing to the left. Take the unsewn side of that guess piece and match up that center. And go ahead and clip that all the way along. Okay, so that's done. You just want to make sure it's nice and straight. So I kind of use the lining band and eyeball it to make sure I got it good. You're going to push the gusset kind of out of the way and just go ahead and baste this together with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. So there we have it. We have the first gusset attached. Now we are going to do the other side. So we're going to put these right sides together. The two lining pieces, I'm actually going to do up my magnetic snap so I know that I'm doing this nice and even and they're going to match up. And then we're going to take the other gusset piece, not the side that has our opening, but the other one, and match it up with that divider pocket on the opposite side, just like we did with the other one. This time we are going to sew all the way to the top of the gusset piece in the center piece. So you're going to notice our gusset has three seams. The joining seams of our divider pocket and then the two seams of the lining. Okay, so you're going to take this to the machine, kind of push all of the outer gusset seams out of the way and sew around with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance from the top of the gusset all the way around. So be very aware of what your bottom gusset pieces are doing there, making sure that that seam's out of the way. You only want to be doing that middle seam. So you'll see me constantly checking to make sure nothing has folded under where it shouldn't be. Okay, so now what we want to do is those markings that we made, the 5 eighths and the 1 inch, we want to open up our seam at the top here and we want to fold that seam down to that 1 inch line, like so. 
I know this seems crazy, but trust me, it is ingenious. You're going to be so surprised what this does. So go ahead and use some double-sided tape here if you like. This double-sided tape will not catch in the seam allowance when we go to top stitch this, so you should be fine to use it. If this is a cotton piece, you can go ahead and press it to get a nice crisp line. So you're going to fold it down to that one inch line to fold in that raw edge. This will be closed up with a top stitch at the end. You could also hold that with clips if you wanted to and go ahead and do the same with the other side. Now let's do our exterior. So on our gusset piece on our exterior, we're going to measure down one inch and make a mark. Take some double sided tape and fold it into that one inch mark. Do the same with the other short side. Now I cut my uh, deck of a light just a little bit too long here, so I'm just gonna kind of pull it up and trim it back a little bit. Okay, so now you wanna fold this in half and find the center of our gusset piece on both sides. Take one of our exterior pieces. You're gonna measure in two inches down from the top of each side. And this is gonna be our placement mark for our gusset pieces because they don't go all the way to the top. Also find your top center and your bottom center. This probably would have been easier if I did this uh, when I first cut the pieces, but I did not, so. Okay, take your gusset piece, right sides together, match that folded edge at those two inch lines we just drew on each side, match that center line or center clip on the bottom, and then just like we did with the lining, you're going to go ahead and distribute that fabric evenly all the way around, small clips in the corners or snips in the corners if you need to distribute that fabric a little bit more evenly around the corners. And the other side as well. Both of our exterior pieces will be connected the exact same way. I'll do this side with you and then you can do the other side. I will be doing the other side off camera. Okay, so let's go ahead and sew this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now you want to start about a 1 8 of an inch down from that folded edge of the gusset. You don't want to go right to the very top of the gusset. So just about an 8 of an inch. Now I'm using my stiletto here just to help get around the corners easier to hold it in place. Because it is rounded, sometimes it wants to pull away. So I find the stiletto helps without getting uh, your finger under the needle, which uh, ask me how I know. Yeah, I did that last week. It hurts. <laughs> Don't get the needle through your finger. So the stiletto is now my new best friend. Learn from my mistakes. So again, when you come up to the next folded edge, you want to stop and backstitch about an eighth of an inch away from the top of that folded edge. You don't want to go quite to the top. And you're going to go ahead and attach the other panel on the other side in the exact same fashion. Okay, so we have that done. As you can see here, I didn't go all the way to the top of that folded edge. So now I've turned my lining 
panel right side out kind of ends up flipping that zipper pocket to the outside it's not in the center right now this is what we want you're going to put this inside of your exterior panel so make sure you're putting your zipper pocket on whichever side you want I like my zipper pocket to be on the back of the bag so I'm making sure it's lined up with the back of the bag now we are not going to match up the side gusset pieces we are going to only match up our curved peaches pieces so the front and the back of the bag we're not going to worry about the gusset sides yet we're going to leave those open for now so we're going to go ahead and sew along our clip side here with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance on both sides not the gusset pieces again So cut your thread and do the exact same thing on the other side. And backstitch when you finish that side again not sewing the gussets okay so as you can see we have our gussets still open that's good we're going to go ahead and just take our pinking shears and just trim off the curvy part of the corners on all four corners which I have done now we're going to reach in through the lining of the opening in the bottom of the bag you're going to pull your lining through And then you're going to reach in and, th and turn your exterior through the opening of the bag. It's actually a pretty easy birthing. It, it, I didn't struggle with it at all. Okay, so you want to kind of go along that seam, point out those curved parts with your fingers so they're nice and round. Make sure everything was caught and there's no holes except for in the gussets. We did not sew the gussets, so that's okay. As you can see here, there's my finger. Go all the way around, just double check and pressing out that seam best you can. And when that seam is looking good and you don't have to go back in and correct anything, kind of flip your lining back the way it's supposed to be like so, so that divider pocket is in the middle and stick it into the bag. I'm just kind of pushing around the through the opening of the bag the curves just to make sure everything is nice and crisp. Then I'm going to go ahead and clip all of my uh, seam down in place where we are going to go ahead and top stitch. Okay, so we are going to be top stitching closed our gusset pieces now. And when you get to them, what you want to do is our seams in there, you want to kind of push them to the front and the back of the bag away from the gusset. And that just makes for a really nice flawless gusset look. There's no lumps or bumps. It's perfection. And this is my first time ever doing a bag like this. And it's just, it's such a great technique. 
So you want to make sure the lining piece and the exterior pieces are even here because that is what's going to close up those gusset pieces. So I use quite a few clips just to make sure. Here we go. So you can see it's all clipped all the way around. Now we're going to go ahead and top stitch with a 1 8 foot seam allowance all the way around this bag. I decided to start at a side gusset. I thought that that would be easier and then I know I've got the first one where it needs to be and it's all even. And try your best to follow the shape of the bag to get a really, really nice top stitch along here. I'm using a dark contrasting thread to my beige color so I want to make sure that I'm as even as I possibly can. Now, as I did the kangaroo pocket in vinyl here, I'm not going to lie, it was it is thick here when you use all vinyl. Um, so please, before you choose vinyl for the kangaroo pocket, make sure that your machine can definitely handle the layers. Like maybe make a little practice sandwich of all of the materials used and the number of layers just to make sure that you can get through those fine. I can get through them fine on my industrial machine. I'm not worried about that, but um, I'm not sure my 2010Q would have gotten through the thick materials that I chose. My lining fabric was a little bit of a thicker fabric too and then I have it backed with the woven as well. So just know your machine's limitations and all shall be great. So I'm coming down to that other gusset piece that I want to make sure that my lining and my exterior, you can see me kind of readjusting it, I want them to be super even and folded down nicely. We don't want any raw edges poking out. So I'm just taking a little extra care right at that gusset piece on either side. And I have to admit, I really do love, love my cylinder arm for top stitching. It's nice to not have to squish the bag and uh, just easier to be able to work in that circle. Uh, free arm machines on a domestic machine are very similar to this. It's great. There we go, our top stitching is done. Now we just need to finish up the last little things of the bag. Just gonna double check that my mag magnetic snaps still match up and they do. Okay, so once you're happy with your top stitching, what you wanna do is open up your zipper pocket. I'm just double checking that my gussets were all caught good. Okay, open up your zipper pocket reach into the opening in the bottom of that zipper pocket and grab the opening of the lining that we left and pull it up and through that zipper pocket. Go ahead and clip that opening and then you're going to take that to the machine and sew it up with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And that's going to close that hole in the bottom of our bag that we turned through. This is my favorite way of finishing a bag. It doesn't leave that ridge at the bottom of the bag where if you just uh, sewed up the lining, it just makes it look flawless. So once that's done, stick that back in through that zipper pocket. And then all that's left to do is to top stitch close that zipper pocket that we have the raw edges folded under. Top stitch that. And then go ahead and install your straps and then we are completely done. There you go. That's it. That's all, folks. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. I loved the construction of this bag. Again, I did 
learn a few new things doing it. And I mean, it's great when you can always learn. So yeah, make sure you check out Stephanie's tutorial on this bag once it's up. Again, that's down in the description below. Buy me a coffee if you like. That's down in the description below. If you haven't already, please like this video. And of course, subscribe if you haven't too. Anyways, thank you everybody. I will catch you on the next one. Bye.